Hello people, and welcome back to part 55 of Begusia, the City of Skylines build guide. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. I'm just kind of hanging out over by the uh, Diverging Diamond interchange here at the start of today's episode. Now, I was just kind of looking at Begusia before we start recording and how big this map has actually become. It's, uh, it's quite the build. And uh, we are slowly coming to the end, I believe. Uh, which is a little bit sad, but it's nice to kind of see things completed. The so last episode we worked on our University of Liberal Arts, and you guys uh, really enjoyed this build. And uh, it turned out quite nicely. The trolley buses are doing nicely as well. Uh, we kind of grab one here. Let's come out of our road tool. So, it's getting some usage. See, there's like 68 people at this stop over here. So, it's definitely getting some usage. Probably not the most efficient spot for a stop right there. He's, uh, he's blocking the, the garbage truck, but that's fine. And uh, yeah, started expanding the uh, the town over here slowly, which will definitely continue, kind of making this a little more important and special on the live stream. Doing some detail over here as well, kind of where the uh, the sunken railway passes under the highway here. So yeah, still uh, still lots to do. And in today's episode, what I wanted to start working on was uh, the mountainside community. So we are finally going to be introducing some cable cars. <laughs> which have been long, long requested for the city. Always have questions saying, when are the cable cars going in? <laughs> when are we using cable cars? And today is the day, finally. So we're going to have kind of a cable car system that runs from our downtown transport hub over here. This guy is uh, a little bit sick from noise pollution. You are too close. So we have our secondary main transport hub over here using the, uh, the monorail and train hub. So with cable cars, um, there are a few different kind of things you can use with them. So obviously one is like a cable car stop. Uh, and this thing has kind of two lines coming out either side of it. And then there is an end of line cable car stop as well, which, you know, kind of does what it says on the tin. This is uh, the, the end of the line, so to speak. So if we just kind of place this here, then it's a pretty nice looking building. We use these in Fremwood um, to kind of take people back and to from the ferry stop into the downtown. And it got a ton of usage. It was actually worked out really well. So we just drag out our cable car stops like this and we can see we have the elevation incline step down here as well. And that's just gonna control how much we go up and go down. So I think we just kind of draw these things out. So we'll kind of come up over the highway. And these things do look really cool when they're kind of flowing. Kind of cool to have a go over the highway as well. So the edge of the map is right here. Now I'm guessing kind of these two slopes here will probably be the best for the mountainside community, I imagine. Just trying to find a good place where they'd look out. I think right up here in the mountain, we may place like the observatory up here. One of the unique buildings. Have a little dirt road that kind of circles up. And then we'll also link this guy in with the road as well. Because uh, over at this interchange here, we have this road that currently leads nowhere. So we can um, we can definitely hook that in at some place as well. You know, remember, we want to give these guys as many connections as possible. So we'll carry on with our little our cable cart road here. And we'll just keep progressing up the mountainside. So it's like we're going to intersect with the road here a little bit. So we should be able to come up. We'll come up a little further again as well. So to make sure that we're not kind of too close to any road or any kind of trees to uh, clip through. We also had a couple of suggestions as to why we didn't use monorail over in the, the theme park uh, over on the zoo. Uh, and that would have been a really nice idea. It's just something I didn't think of during the build. We ended up going for monorail instead, but uh, cable cars are really nice assets to use within your theme parks if you want to kind of use something a little different. Okay. There's a lot of dead people down here at the moment. Need to make sure we're um, at another cemetery, maybe. Okay. Is this going to be a good spot? I think we'll kind of have two separated towns. So we'll add a cable car stop in here. Let's go ahead and grab that. I don't think I want to use too many main roads for these kind of towns. And we'll probably stick with just the main kind of small road. 
it's kind of roads like this and obviously introduce a few dirt roads as well so what we'll do is we'll grab a little one-way loop so let's go from here out to there and then we should be able to squeeze in just the regular cable car stop here and as we come out from the side we can kind of come down like that. So actually break him and then we'll draw out from this one just so that incline is a little is a little better. Is that too low to the ground? Potentially. Let's rework him a little bit. Let's bring him kind of over here and then we'll drop down just a couple of steps and then we can connect into there and that should be okay. And then what we can do is just draw him out. Oh, I wonder if we should kind of come out over the gap like this. That might be quite cool, like that. So then he kind of you know goes over this big air. Uh, it's almost like a horseshoe valley, isn't it, within the side of the mountain? Okay, so I think that'd be pretty cool. So already we can see them; uh, they are starting to move out because they have a stop now. So they hold thirty uh, per people, or oh, 30, thirty thirty people per car. Sorry. Is, uh, is what I meant to say. Okay. So we should have some people kind of coming to and from this. Obviously wants their stuff up at the top of the mine for them to go to. It's a pretty cool looking building. I do like them. Some people walking over to the cemetery there by the looks of it. Okay. So I think for this mountainside side community that the best looking buildings are probably going to be the green city specializations so we'll kind of draw in a uniform district to kind of reinforce that and give them the houses that we want them to have because I think the without place the the uh, the growables or plot the droppables plop the glow <laughs> without plot the growables and um, it's going to be quite hard to kind of get the feel that we want in this town I think so we'll kind of bear that in mind let's start to bring this guy down the side of the hill so again I want this road to be quite windy maybe bring him out a touch further there we go so it's like slowly climbing the mountainside and this will look really great at night because the uh, kind of the street lights will be lighting this little windy road up so I really want to kind of factor in the natural shape of the mountain. So let's see. Looks like this would probably be the smoothest descent. Maybe this one right here. I think we'll do this one on the right hand side just because it looks a little nicer passing by that rock feature that comes in with the map. So lots of tight turns. And then we'll just kind of keep coming down like this. And then let's draw in this main road that's going to carry on. And then he can just go over there for right now. And there we go. So let's just have a little review of this road. Obviously we have some rocks, but we'll delete those when we come to detail. So it's slowly climbing. Just kind of follow it around and make sure there's no too steep sections. Yeah, this is okay, I think. It winds all the way up. And then we can already see kind of the cable cars coming out of the downtown here as well. That's going to look really cool. And then we're coming up nice and smooth. And then we arrive kind of at what would be a mini town centre, I guess. And then we can draw some streets off by using some dirt roads and get some, some little kind of mountainside suburbs in. So I think what we'll do here, we'll have some kind of... Now, I believe that we have already used all of our unique plazas, have we? We do have the Statue of Industry. How would this look here? Does that look a little janky? I think it does. I think we'll have to terraform here. So let's go ahead and grab our smooth land tool, or level terrain. And then we'll kind of level this little plateau out from the, the start of the road. That should make it a little easier to place this thing in. And then we'll make kind of a very obvious cliff face. 
So this would be a nice little viewpoint. So let's actually draw in the roads first. And then we can place this guy in like that. Fantastic. Okay, I think that looks pretty nice, having the Statue of Industry right here. Looks out over the city. Almost, if you know, this city was uh, founded on its prestigious level of industry that it has. And I really like that. It's kind of a perfect asset to kind of sit on the cliffside like that. I think we will maybe make these roads a little nicer, where the statue sits. That seems like it might, might be a nice idea. And then maybe let's drop in a nice kind of fancy dirt path. Uh, with the zoo path maybe. Yeah, okay. Always get the zoo paths in. <laughs> Alright, so let's look at some specialisation. So I think we will go green cities for this. Uh, for residential and commercial. We'll kind of see. We'll maybe try an area that has just the regular stuff and see how that kind of fits in with this small town theme. But anyway, we'll carry on mapping out our road network. So the main town will kind of zoom out here. It's like we're a little too close to the to the cable car for that road to make it through. So we'll we'll carry on with this fashion over here and we'll just take him over there for right now. Leave him like that and then we can hook our cable car back in. Let's delete him on this side. So I think as for around here, we'll have some nice commercial that sits opposite this. And then maybe some on the sides as well. So because we're working with such kind of strange terrain here, we're going to get a lot of little different broken tiles and some very strange land generation. So we'll kind of make sure that we do the best to factor in different shape zonings to make this place look as nice as it does. So we'll go and hook in some power and water and then we'll come back once this thing starts to develop a little bit. So we've got some things beginning to develop. Again, we'll just kind of keep an eye on how this Green Cities theme develops. So you know, I think these type of buildings right here, they're going to fit in very well with this mountainside community that we're after. Maybe some here in the middle too. Maybe we can go for like a little, little bit of path decoration. So I think this forms a nice little town centre and this is going to start bringing a little bit of traffic uh, up to the mountainside community. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. So now we have kind of a little town centre going on. Let's go ahead and grab a dirt road. Grab the two lane gravel. And uh, let's start spamming out. So I want these curves to be quite small. You know, nothing too harsh. And the reason for that is I'm trying to generate the largest possible zone in tiles. And you can see if we make the the um, the curve very harsh, then we get all these very awkward shaped ones that we don't really like building on. So by doing this, we're just going to allow the largest possible houses to come in. So we'll just have a few little arms off like this. Don't want it to be too kind of... What's the word? Too uniform, I guess. Maybe have one that comes out from this one as well. And then maybe one towards the bottom. Where we have some... So again, I want to try and stick with the natural terrain that comes with this mountain. I don't want to be doing too much terraforming to get things to fit. And maybe one down here at the front as well. Okay, so we're going to do some kind of very selective zone in here. So we'll go for four by fours, but obviously we're not going to try and pack them in very close together. And maybe the, the odd three by three here as well. We want to kind of make this very lush forest to sit around all the houses as well. It should be quite nice. And I think I'm going to have them all facing out over the city. So I guess these houses would be quite expensive to live in. You'd have to have an awful lot of money to come live in kind of very secluded place like this. 
I guess you can kind of take it two ways. You can go kind of like very Beverly Hills with it, or you know, it's almost like quite a poor area to live. Entirely up to you, kind of which one you want to take it. Kind of how like we did with the um, with this little thing down here. So this is obviously without the green city specialization. So these are the kind of houses we get generating in. Yeah, you know, they look quite small town. It's nothing too kind of lush. I guess we can hook this guy into this highway interchange over here as well. We'll do that at some point. Okay, yeah, so these are exactly the type of things I was looking forward to getting in. Obviously they will change as they level up, but I do kind of want the maximum level green cities houses here. So let's kind of get a little look from here. So he's got a pretty nice view already. So we'll keep waiting for those guys to come in and I'll go ahead and give them some utility services. Alright guys, so I've just carried on expanding the little road pattern here using the dirt roads and we're starting to get some houses come in. Uh, obviously the new jobs are abandoning uh, due to the new kind of population changes so we'll wait for this town to stabilise uh, before we kind of uh, keep waiting for this residential to go out. You know, once uh, these guys arrive here there will be uh, enough people for the jobs. So I've placed in a little community school here as well on the main road, kind of in the entrance into kind of the dirt roads. And uh, we've placed a couple of little park assets just as a little kind of community hub. That's kind of away from the uh, the main cable car stop over here. And uh, we'll draw them some services in as well. So I think we'll stick to the, the regular road for this. And we'll just bring out a little curve just like that and then we can probably get in a fire station here too having one there and a police station so you know this place is going to require a whole lot of detailing <laughs> because right now it looks very plain so we get lots of nice kind of little like, mini parks and forests in here and we'll also uh, do kind of a lot of tree and path detailing as well just to help make it bring to life a little bit more get rid of a lot of these open green spaces you know so i've also gone ahead and upgraded uh, the mountainside road into the two-way highway just so they move a little faster because they were taking so long to get up here uh, we've also hooked in this guy to this uh country highway interchange that we've got going on over here as well so yeah let's um let's have a look at the observatory so I think with the observatory, we're going to kind of have it right on the pinnacle here. This seems like a good place to pop it down. So we'll go ahead and do that. So let's grab our two-way highway. And I think we'll probably have to bridge out here, I imagine. Maybe here. So if we turn on all our snapping. And then let's have a little look. Let's bring that elevation step down to the lowest point. I think how would the suspension bridge look if we came back down to ground over this way? Does that look ridiculous? Not sure. Let's take this back a little. And smoothen them out. I think it looks alright. I guess for a bridge of this size, crossing a distance that big, you would have to have the suspension cables in. I don't know, maybe any um, civil engineers in the comments can answer that question. <laughs> Not too sure, but we'll roll with it for right now. We'll see how it kind of works out in the long run. Okay, so we now need to kind of get up to this point here. So let's start moving this guy back down to ground. And then we'll carry on that kind of snaking pattern that we've had going on around here. So slope too steep. And just keep door checking the road. It's always nice, you know, when you're making these kind of very steep mountainside roads in your city that you try and keep them as realistic as possible. You no, know, they're always quite windy. At least, you know, we have a lot of these kind of roads where I live in the lakes. They're um they are they can be quite fun to drive on. <laughs> if you guys want to see one, you can go ahead and Google um either the Kirkstone Pass or the Rhinos. That's W-R-Y-N-O-S-E uh, Have a look at that road and you'll kind of get a feel for this very windy uh, tight mountainous road I think I'm happy with the kind of the unevenness of this and it goes up and down It can be a little bit of a dangerous drive 
Okay, and this is going to be a good spot for our observatory. So let's go ahead and level out the train a little bit like we did for the uh, for the Statue of Industry. We'll make a little bit of a platform for it. So just grabbing our level terrain tool, we'll kind of push this guy out. And then we can make a little bit of a, a road network for it as well. Okay, and then uh, we'll take a rid of oh, some of these trees. Wonderful. So I think we'll go with the tree lane. The, uh, the lane with trees for this. We'll kind of draw in a nice uh, frontage road. We'll smoothen that out as well because that's a little bit severe. There we go. Let's kind of smoothen that out a little bit there. This is also going to be a really nice project to finally use some of the larger rock assets that we very, well, very rarely use. Okay. So this is a this is a great viewpoint of the city, isn't it? Really shows the scale of it. Got the dam over here as well. It's very nice. Okay, so the observatory. It's kind of weird that this thing produces noise pollution. But I suppose they can't be quiet buildings. So that's going to be right in there. Very nice. And then I guess we'll just kind of take this guy back. All our snapping is on. And then we'll just draw, I guess, a little box road around this thing. And then we can hook our two lane highway into the side of it. Just like that. So we'll definitely apply some detail into this thing as well. But uh, it's certainly a nice way to use one of the unique buildings to give it its own surrounding and purpose. Very nice. So I do think the suspension bridge works. Do quite like it. How are we looking kind of from the bottom of the uh, the valley here? Yeah, it looks alright I think, doesn't it? So obviously we'll need to carry on our cable car stop as well. So let's go ahead and grab this guy right here. And then we'll kind of keep sticking as close to the road as we possibly can. You know, I want lots of these nice kind of high beams that are flowing across. So that's going to be a super easy way for people to get up to the observatory from here. Alright guys, so that's going to feel like a good place to go ahead and jump into a detailing time lapse. I imagine it's going to be quite a long one because we've got a bit of work to do to kind of make this place feel uh, a little more kind of special. It's very plain at the moment, lots of empty green space which as we know we are not a fan of on the build guide. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll be right back.
right, guys, that is going to do it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, a like below is always appreciated. Even as much if you didn't enjoy it, please feel free to leave a dislike as well. I kind of feel like it's kind of hard to create a real genuine mountainside community without using pretty heavily modded stuff from the workshop. However, we've done our best to try and create a real dense mountainside forest, creating pockets of redwoods, some kind of exposed stone that's on the mountain, a couple of little rock features as well. The nature reserve fence works really nicely for kind of creating like a little roadside border. You know, it's not kind of stone or concrete. It's just what the locals have put up to try and make the roads a little bit safer. And uh, yeah, I don't think it turned out too badly in the end and we'll definitely carry on adding some little features here and there within the live streams. But it's a nice little way to kind of round off uh, this corner of the map that was kind of totally empty uh, before we started here. Uh, hang around for the rest of the intro tag and tech out or outro tag rather and uh, check out some of the finer details we did and uh, but yeah that is it from me thank you so much for watching and as always enjoy the rest of your day <laughs>